All right. Um, thanks. Thanks for joining Gru and thanks for taking time out of your day and coming on the show. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me, man. Definitely, buddy. Definitely. So, so like the, the first thing I wanted to start out asking you is, is what, what drew you to what, when did your passion start for wanting, wanting to make films? That's a good question. <clears throat> so when I, when I was a kid, um, me and my brother and my neighbor would run around with a little, you know, a camcorder making dumb videos where we pretend to be Harry Potter and all these, all these other kind of silly things. And I made the mistake of putting that on a hard drive that I left in a school computer and it ended up being uploaded on YouTube. So everyone in my school saw this thing. And I was like, all right, I either have to like accept that I'm going to be bullied for the rest of my life or just own this. Yeah. And I, so I kind of just like, all right, yeah, that's me. I, I'm this weird nerdy kid. And that kind of stuck with me, but I thought it wasn't a real career option. And everyone always says that. And in hindsight, of course, you can do it. But I ended up going to university and I joined a comedy group, YouTube group, very silly videos we made. One of them went viral on YouTube and it was wow. a Star Wars related comedy video. And that led me onto a film set where the producer thought I was some sort of social media wizard, which I wasn't, but I didn't say anything. And uh, he convinced me to go to film school. I was going to go do politics instead of film. And he convinced me, no, Wait, why don't you really? go do film in LA? Yeah. So that's, that's oh, it, really. really. And then I came out to LA. I didn't know much about like traditional filmmaking or any, you know, just the silly little YouTube stuff. And uh, here I am now. So, I, I mean, he's literally changed the trajectory of my life, this, this producer. So I'm glad he did that. Yeah, definitely. Because you know, if you weren't doing film now, you would be standing at some some building doing politics speeches. <laughs> well, it, I mean, it was, dude, this was in 2015. So it would have been the craziest time of, the, of an, and this is going to be in America. Coming into politics in like a 2016, 2015 in America would have been wild as well. So I'm glad I oh, dodged God, all that yes. drama. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so so you got a new new film. It's a horror thriller, and um. So how, how so what in, in inspired you to want to come on board for the film? Well, that, well, <clears throat> we actually shot it during COVID when we were in lock the proper beginning of the real lockdown, not beginning, but like during the real lockdown, and so. We're in this house. We had this forest in the back of the house, this beautiful location. We were bored of our minds. We didn't even have a car. We couldn't go anywhere. And me and my partner at the time um, would watch all these sort of thrillers and horrors. And she oh, came up with this fantastic idea. I can't give it away because the story, is, well, it's, yeah. it's tough to not give it away because the way the movie is made. Um, yeah. And then we kind of got a, a, a motley crew of filmmakers and film friends together. I think we had a crew of like four people on principle, something like that, not even. Um, and they all came to the house. We had to convince SAG to let us shoot. We we're actually the first SAG film in the whole South East United States, which is pretty cool. Really? And the only way we managed, to, the only way we got away with that was by we got on a Zoom with these SAG bigwigs, and they're like, "But how are you going to do this?" And I'm like, "Well, everyone has to take COVID tests, drive to the house, not do anything on the way. They can't get gas, they can't do anything, and then <clears throat> they're all negative, and then they're not allowed to leave the house for two weeks. We're gonna, <sighs> we're gonna lock them up, and then they're like." Yeah, but people will leave, right? I'm like, no, no, no one leaves. If they leave, then with the whole thing, we lose all, there was someone could catch COVID. So yeah. we had to stay on this in this house for two weeks. And that was how we made the film. It was, it was basically like a sleepover party for two weeks. Yeah, it sounds like so, it. Yeah. Wow. So, so, so basically it, it took the film like two two weeks to make or, or was it longer than that? We I think it was like 10 days of it on principle. And then we did like, three or four days where we went back to Florida to pick up some extra scenes um, and, or like pick up shots and stuff. And then we did one day in LA. So yeah, about two weeks total. Wow. That, that's actually is, really, yeah, I mean, really short time to, to film. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of indie films are shot in these kind of time frames, and you have to be really smart about using your resources wisely and locations. And otherwise you kind of, you stretch yourself too thin, you know, but because we were all living in the house, it was funny. Like there'd be, we had like an AD who'd like announced the call time. We're like, we're already going to be on. We're here. Like knocking on the actors' room. Was like, wake up. It doesn't. It, but why have a call? I mean, I know we should have a call time, but it was. It all became a little bit informal, which was really cool. You know? Yeah. 
so did you have one one person signed to cook like did you have someone that cooked and 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 did all like the house stuff <laughs> we had no we had we had we had a, we had remote producers who like one of them came up with this genius idea of like of slow cooking so at the beginning of the day we'd throw food in like a slow cooker and then we'd have food for the whole day it was actually really smart. Okay. So we were even things like that. We were like every person's time is really valuable. We need to yeah. figure out a way to like you, you know have things happening in the background. And then like the producer who was based in Boston would like order food to the house from Boston for in you know what I mean. So it was all and then they'd have to leave it at the front door. And then even then this I think the CD was say was saying that sunlight killed COVID. So we'd leave it in the sun for like ten minutes, which didn't go down great if the food was supposed to be cold. But you know. <laughs> all these little things it was it was really wild yeah yeah it sounds i i, I mean even even though like that that period of time wasn't wasn't a fun period but that like something like that seemed seemed like it, it was it was fun like you you your cast and your crew these are all in this house and you're filming and hanging out and eating and and talking and and chilling and so how how was that experience like for you like did you, did you make friends while while living living together 100 percent. and some of these guys who lived in florida at the time you know i was like guys you've got to move to la come on come out to la and you're fantastic filmmakers and some of them have moved out one of my best buddies is there was the guy who did sound on the project he's one of my best friends in the whole world i'm seeing him tonight he lives in la now he's absolutely killing it and i just think it's awesome you know and so some of these people i, I still see all the time and it, it really is like i think that's the cool thing about any film you can really create a, a much more sense of family because it, when it's too big of a project and there's yeah it just it's harder you know so I think, oh. um, yeah, it was just, there was a lot of fun. So where, where did you film, film at? Like what, what area was like the house at and everything? It's a, a, a rural county just north of Tampa in Florida. Um, so yeah, it was, the, it really was the middle of nowhere. And the forests <laughs> were, um, were just the backdrop of the movie. And it was, it was really cool. I, I'm a big forest guy. Love them. Love them in yes. any movie. Give me a forest. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, if you if you notice, like mostly like all the good horror films, it, it, it's like an an old house or an old cabin, and it's in the forest and old woods and trees, and and that that's what what makes the horror movie good because like you're in the middle of no of nowhere, no one can hear you, no one can see you, and that's what always makes like yeah a good horror film like that kind of of creep of creepiness. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I, yeah, I completely agree. And um, we actually did this thing where the production design had this idea that throughout the movie, we we had plants in the house, but she was like, mm. every scene, add more plants to the house. Just keep adding them as we go. And it, it'll look like a continuity error if you're really like noticing, but actually the idea is the forest is taking over the house, which I thought was a really yeah. cool... And she was remote, so we had to do a thing with her because she was in LA during COVID again. So we had to FaceTime her and I'd be like, where do I put this plant in this room? And then I put it there and, she, and then I'd come back and she's like, no, no, it needs to go a little bit to the right. It was bizarre, but we did the whole production design all remote over FaceTime. And I, but like, you, you can do that. Like, I know it sounds crazy, but it, it looked good. She killed it. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I get text from her, water the plants, water the plants. Anyway. <laughs> I know you can't give too much away about the film and everything, but was there like a certain scene that you had the most fun with, like a, a scene that you loved shooting the most? Let's see. Um, I think there's, uh, it's tough. This one does give it away. There's a scene where, uh, yeah, it's tough to get all the scenes that come to mind are ones that yeah. give things away. I'll be, I'll be honest with you. Um, I really like the detective. I think the detective is a really fun character and he adds a little bit of humor to the movie. And his scenes were so much fun. A guy An called Anwar Wolf, he's a really, really good actor. And he just has this like charisma about him. Turns up in this leather jacket, which he hated me for because it was Florida. Why, why are you making me wear this? And he's just, it's just something about him. He's just so charming. A lot of people in the test screenings were like, this guy was well, more Anwar. Let's go a spin off movie with him. Yeah, right, anyway. exactly. <laughs> and his even his name, his name was Mr. Biltmore, which is just fantastic. So, anyway. 
And what about the score for the film? Like, who did you wind up getting to do, oh. do like, the music? Best composer in the world. Her name is Becca Shack. She is just lovely as a human, and she's so talented as a... As a I want to work with her forever, honestly. She just... She was unbelievable. She's she's Her background is not in composing, but in just more, like, you know, live music as a, as a performer. And mm-hmm. she's moving into composing, and she's getting a lot of jobs, and it doesn't surprise me at all, because she's... She just has such a good, ah, oh, she's so good. We're doing a soundtrack release too for the movie. That's how good we, we feel like the, okay. the music is. Yeah, I, I oh, love composing and I just think it's like, like making a movie, it's creating something new that's never before, before been seen or in this case heard. You know, I think it's just as exciting as making a movie. So, um, Becca Shack, everyone should hire her. She's fantastic. <laughs> you don't get any count. <laughs> And like, what kind of horror and thriller films were were you watching to get get you ready to make to make a film like this? Definitely on the more on the psychological end of things, as you can imagine. Okay. Um, Fincher was we watched pretty much Fincher's entire filmography before watch before this movie, um, just because because in, in a part in a way this movie is all kind of a mystery too. I think mm-hmm. I would I would argue like a mystery thriller in that sense. So yeah. he was just, his movies are fantastic in that regard. Um, we watched a lot of movies, man. Like, what else are you going to do during COVID, right? As, as, well, so yeah, we, we watched, I mean, hundreds. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I've always loved horror. So I, me and my roommate have this thing where in October, we only watch horror movies for the whole month. Like we can't watch anything else. So, <laughs> you know, yeah. So, uh, but I think definitely Fincher, a little bit of Hitchcock was in there, I think. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's hard to remember exactly which one. And then just the ones, I think it's not a horror that like necessarily is like a jump scare, but it's something that gets under your skin, right? It's more of a disconcerting oh, okay. horror, more like an Ari Aster, Astery horror, like, oof, like it, you know what I mean? It makes you feel like this discomfort is the, is the hope. I hope people feel that way. <laughs> we'll see. Right, exactly. <laughs> and like halloween just passed did you did you dress up or go to any parties or anything i did i i made the mistake of going as a son sons of have you seen sons of anarchy the tv show about the bikers oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah but people thought we were real bikers and there were also bouncers who wouldn't let us into certain bars because they're like we can't let you when you're wearing gang colors i'm like what <laughs> it was it was a really interesting experience seriously so i'm not sure i would do that again i wouldn't recommend necessarily but <laughs> you know you know it would have been funny if you actually came in riding riding a bike riding like a, a mo- motorcycle to the bar and and they would really thought you were a biker then oh yeah well yeah then they would have been like dude there's no way we believe you you're, you're, you're we're not letting you in but yeah <laughs> what about yourself did you celebrate halloween i did i did i loved it i was Eric Draven from the Crow, that that movie, The Crow, oh. Brandon Brandon Lee, yeah. Bruce Lee, some. Yeah, 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 that's awesome, man. I love that. So you actually went on, you went for a horror character, yeah. which is cool. Versus me. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Definitely. That that that's what I usually. That's what I usually always do. Like I love horror, and I I love like all the characters in horror movies. And every year, I I'm always picking like a different like horror person to be. That's the way to do it, man. I messed up. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and and this has nothing to do with horror or the film. But do do you have a go to karaoke song that you like to do if you're out with friends? Oh man, I love. I, so I live three blocks from a karaoke bar called The Good Night. If you ever go, it's in North Hollywood. It's amazing. Uh, I'll be, so Enrique Iglesias Hero or Backstreet Boys. I want it that way. Those are probably the two songs I've sung the most in my life. Okay, so, those are. Good. I don't know what that's great. <laughs> but yeah, okay. If you say so. <laughs> <laughs> and like where could fans like see the film and follow the film at? Well, it's gonna be released tomorrow on Tubi and Amazon. So that's where yeah, November eighth, Tubi and Amazon. And if you're in the UK, it's I believe on Amazon and Sky. And then hopefully the rest of the world will soon follow uh, in the coming months. So yeah, sweet buddy. And where can fans follow you at? 
Uh, I need to change my Instagram, but right now it's Jester Lad, like a king's jester from medieval times, lad, or just georgehhorton.com. Okay, there you go. <laughs> well, I want to thank thank you so much for taking time and coming on the show. I appreciate you you coming on and, and talking about your film. Thank you for having me, man. Honestly, it's been really fun. Thank you, man. Have a good right. one, buddy. We'll take <laughs> you too. Okay. Take it easy. Bye. Cheers. Okay. And I will leave and here we go. Okay, so um